Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome uh, to this uh, webinar presented by the Imaging D Data Science Interest Group of the WMIS. Uh, today, we're going to hear from our speaker, Yuming Li, who you'll hear more about in a moment. Uh, I'm your moderator, Joseph Ackerman at Washington University here in St. Louis. Um, today, we're going to hear about uh, the title of the talk is Learning Apparent Diffusion Coefficient Maps from Accelerated Radial K-Space Diffusion Weighted MRI in Mice using a CNN transformer. And if you don't know what a CNN transformer is, um, just stay tuned and you will find out. I want to remind you that uh, abstract submissions are now open for the 2023 uh, World Molecular Imaging Congress. So get those abstracts in and uh, get your registration in. It should be a terrific meeting. You can see September 5 to 9 here. It's going to be in Prague, one of the most gorgeous cities uh, in Europe. Um, a couple of quick reminders. Uh, March 30th. Uh, the Women in Molecular Imaging um, Network uh, is having a, a webinar. It's the Leadership Awards webinar. And you can see we've got a great lineup of speakers, Anna Wu, uh, Naomi Matsura, and Veronica Jordan. And I urge you to uh, plan to attend that. And then uh, later, in, uh, April 25, a dear, uh, near and dear to my heart, um, Charlie Springer, who I hope many of you know, um, will be presenting again an imaging data science uh, webinar entitled Metabolic Activity Diffusion Imaging, MADI, Non-Invasive High-Resolution Mapping of Sodium Pump Flux and Cell Metrics in Vivo. Uh, Charlie has recently published a couple of back-to-back -back manuscripts that really, I think, um, may be a major leap forward in interpretation of a diffusion imaging metrics. Um, this webinar is being put on, as I've mentioned a number of times, by the Imaging Data Science uh, Interest Group. And I urge uh, all of you interested in data science out there to um, join the interest group and its many activities. Today, we're going to hear from Yuming Li. She's a PhD candidate at the Perlman School of Medicine, the University of Pennsylvania, and, and Philadelphia, USA. She's the fourth year PhD candidate, and she's majoring in bioengineering in the field of medical imaging analysis. Yuming has a strong interest in the application of machine, machine learning techniques to the field of medical imaging, and her past research focused on lung nodule detection, brain structural segmentation, and accelerated diffusion weighted MR reconstruction. Um, her, you know, primary goal, obviously, is to de develop efficient and accurate advanced machine learning algorithms can that will ultimately lead to better outcomes for patients. And with that, I'm going to turn this webinar over to Yuming. Oh, hello. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll share my screen. <laughs> Sorry, I I, I, was, I pressed the wrong button and somehow it just exited the, the meeting. Uh, can you see the shared screen? Not yet. Um, it says you started screen sharing. So let's see what there we are. Okay, cool. Um, so I will start my presentation now. Um, Hello, everyone. My name is Yuming Li. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate at University of Pennsylvania, majoring in bioengineering and supervised by Dr. Fan Yong. Um, the research is collaborated with Dr. Rong Zhou's group at Department of Radiology at the University of Pennsylvania. 
This presentation will provide a background knowledge on diffusion MRI and CNNs to accommodate the mixed audience. So the, the presentation's uh, title is Learning Apparent Diffusion Coefficient Maps from Accelerated Radio case space Diffusion Weighted MRI in Mice Using Deep CNN Transformer Model. You mean you've got you go to presentation mode. You're we're we're seeing your notes as well as the slide. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, share it again. Great. Uh, what about now? Can you Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, so I will first introduce the diffusion weighted MRI. Diffusion weighted MRI provides quantitative matrix related to the translational mobility of water hindered by microstructure present in biological tissue. Uh, apparent diffusion coefficient map of water derived from DWI scans have been employed extensively as a biomarker in neurological and oncological applications. DWI pass sequence collect, uh, collecting DWI scans at multiple B values are sensitive to motion, such as respiratory motion, resulting in errors in quantitative measurements of ADC tissues. So in clinical DWI, respiratory motion can be mitigated by employing a single shot echo, uh, echo planar imaging, EPI, with parallel acquisition. The quantitative matrix derived from DWI series have been investigated as a biomarker in co-clinical trials. In DWI of mass, however, due to higher respiration rate and magnetic susceptibility effects increasing with magnetic field strains, EPI-based uh, EPI DWI performance on preclinical MI in, uh, instruments leads to distortion and artifacts. By leveraging the intrinsic motion insensitivity property of radio case based sampling, previous studies have shown that the radio sample diffusion weighted spin echo acquisition method effectively suppress the uh, respiratory motion artifacts in DWMR images of mouse abdomen over a wide range of B values. However, compared to the single shot uh, API, the acquisition time of red WSE is substantially longer. So an effective means to shorten the red WSE scanning time is to acquire the undersampled case-based data. However, accelerating red WSE case-based data acquisition degrades the image quality drip. Uh, dramatically, especially at higher B values due to lower signal to noise ratio and subsequently degrades the derived ADC maps. Two approaches can be adapted to generate high quality ADC maps. First, we can generate the high quality uh, DWS scans followed by fading to a diffusion model to estimate ADC. Second, the, we can directly generate high quality ADC maps from accelerated ADC maps. Although high quality DW images can be generated using deep learning methods that uh, have achieved a promising performance, the performance of such indirect methods hinders on the quality of the generated DWI images uh, at, dif at different B values with varied signal to noise ratio. On the other hand, directly generating high quality ADC maps from accelerated ADC maps can be implemented using a deep learning model under supervision, under, under a supervised learning setting. However, such approach only utilizes ADC maps and does not utilize the individual DW images. Convolutional neural networks are a typical of artificial neural network that are commonly used for image recognition and uh, computer vision tasks. At high, uh, at high level, CNN works by breaking down the image into small parts called features, and those features are then analyzed and combined to identify patterns or objects within the image. This process is called convolution, which involves sliding the small filters uh, or kernel over the image to extract the features. In deep learning tasks, the encoder 
compress the input data into a lower dimension representation, and the decoder generates high dimensional output data from the low uh, dimension representations. Well, UNet is a type of encoder decoder network that includes skip connections between the encoder and the decoder. Attention mechanism is a technique used in deep learning to selectively focus on the different parts of the input data, allowing deep learning model to capture the relationships between the different elements of the input and make more informed decisions. The bottleneck self-attention is a variant of self-attention that specifically focused on the bottleneck of the encoder-decoder deep learning network. Um, deep learning models have achieved a promising performance from the accelerated case-based data using the case-based domain, uh, image domain, or both domains. Although many deep learning methods have been developed for MR data generation tasks with different image acquisition methods, our method is developed to improve the ADC computation from accelerated DWI data collected with the radio case based sample diffusion weighted spin echo acquisition method. So here comes to our question, can we generate the high quality ADC maps estimation from accelerated DWI data? In, re in this research, our purpose is to accelerate radio sample diffusion weighted spin echo acquisition method for generating high quality apparent diffusion coefficient maps. A deep learning method uh, is developed to generate accurate ADC maps from accelerated DWI data acquired with the red DWSE method. The deep learning method integrates the convolutional neural networks with the vision transformer to generate high quality ADC maps from accelerated DWI data, regularized by a mono exponential ADC model fitting term. Um, so I will introduce our data set a little bit. Uh, all model handling protocols are reviewed and approved by the IACUC of the University of Pennsylvania. The animal study employed a genetically engineered mouse uh, model of pancreatic ductal uh, adenocarcinoma that spontaneously develops pre magnet link uh, pre uh, pancreatic intraepithelial neoplastic lesion at, at seven to 10 weeks of age to achieve sufficient uh, SNR and image quality. 403 spokes were used as a reference uh, acquisition. Although Nyquist uh, correction requires fewer views, about uh, 150, subsequently four times and eight times reduction in sampling from the reference acquisition were used to evaluate the effectiveness of our deep learning strategy for accelerating the data acquisition. So here's a detailed um, acquisition parameters we used in our study. Based on the fully sampled red DWSC data, we evaluated our proposed model with two different acceleration factors of uh, four times and eight times. The four times accelerated DWI data were generated by sampling one out of every four radio views in case space, resulting a total of 101 views, while the eight times accelerated DWI data were generated by sampling one out of every eight radio views in case space, resulting in a total of uh, five, uh, 50 views. The figure on the left shows the diffusion weighted images and ADC maps from fully and accelerated red DWIC scans at different B values. The accelerated image were obtained by downsampling the fully sampled data with acceleration factor of four and eight, and the ADC maps were computed with, from their corresponding DWI images by fitting the model exponential model, we observed that the ADC map decreases as the degree of acceleration increases. So for our experiments, um, 
we have the training of 147 animals and we have a testing of 36 animals. Um, the training and testing are randomly selected from our data set. So here is a, a architecture of our proposed network. So our proposed network is constructed to generate high quality ADC maps from accelerated DWI data collected with the ready WSE sequence. The, so the, the input of the uh, deep learning model includes the accelerated DWI images and their corresponding ADC maps. As shown in box A, uh, the network uses accelerated DWI images and ADC maps as the multi-channel input to the neural networks. And in box B, uh, high quality ADC maps and uh, S0 maps are generated from CNN model. So this is the model output and we further feed uh, the model put into the model exponential model to generate the high quality DWI images. So uh, as shown in the figure, this is the reconstructed DWI. Um, in the model backbone uh, bottleneck, we used a bottleneck transformer model. It has a self-attention layer to extract the attention features from the input images. So we performed our experiments on a single NVIDIA uh, Titan RTX GPU with PyTorch implementation. We utilized the Atom optimizer with a learning rate of uh, one times 10 to the negative five, uh, five uh, degree. The model was trained in a total of 1000 epochs with approximately two hours. We, uh, during the pre-processing, we clipped the DWI data into the maximum value of 99 percentile. And we further normalized the image into the, between the one to uh, zero to one range and all the loss function are L1 loss. So during the evaluation, we choose to use four evaluation matrix. Uh, the first one is correlation coefficient. Uh, second one is structural similarity index, uh, and the uh, third one is peak signal to noise ratio, and the third one is normalized uh, mean square, uh, square error. So the last three uh, metrics are commonly used to, to evaluate the image reconstruction tasks, and besides using those three, we also choose to use the correlation coefficient to learn the correlation between the reconstructed outputs and the of, high, of original fully sampled outputs. So our experiments are carried on both the, high, uh, the whole images and the region of interests. For the region of interests, we specifically looking at the kidney, blood, uh, kidney, blood, and the muscle. Um, so we compared our deep ADC uh, net with state-of-the-art deep learning model methods, including the UNet, dense UNet, uh, FBP convo net, and attention UNet. Those methods were implemented with the same network architecture as reported in their corresponding paper to generate the high-quality ADC maps from accelerated ADC maps. We utilize the same training and the inference setting to train all the models where the best model were saved based on the best correlation coefficient score estimated based on the training data set. And we evaluate the model overall performance on the testing data set with four uh, quantitative metrics. The ablation studies were carried on to investigate how different components of the proposed deep learning methods contribute to the ADC map generation, uh, including different inputs, a different combination of the loss function terms and self-attention. So here is the uh, outputs of our network uh, performance. The table summarized the quantitative evaluation matrix for ADC map generated by our proposed network and the alternative state-of-the-art methods under comparison. 
um, we compared our network with uh, the least square fitting and the other four deep learning based uh, uh, models. So in the um, in the words below, uh, we can see the the up arrow means better and the, the down um, uh, the down arrow means better for the NMSE and the, the rest of the matrix, uh, if the value is higher, that means the model performs better results. So the ADC map estimated from the accelerated data images with the least square fitting were sub uh, substantially different from those derived with, the, with their corresponding fully sample data images. Um, UNET, dense UNET, attention UNET, and FBP ConvoNet yield ADC maps with improved similarity to fully sampled data compared with those estimated directly from accelerated DW images with least square fitting. Um, our proposed deep ADC net yield the best similarity for all metrics studied. The quantitative evaluation results summarized in the table also demonstrate that it was more challenging to estimate the high quality ADC maps uh, from the eight times accelerated data than from the four times accelerated data. So the figure shows the <clears throat> representative fully sampled and accelerated data images with their corresponding ADC maps obtained by fitting the model exponential model, indicating that the accelerated data uh, were noisy, especially at higher B values, and the derived ADC map lose the anatomical details. So the image slice is uh, randomly selected from the median and MSE uh, performance. The first and the, the fourth row show the ground truth and the generated ADC maps. The second and the fifth rows show the absolute error map with the range displayed up to 75 of the maximum difference. The third and sixth row show the absolute error maps in the uh, tumor region with the range displayed up to 25 maximum difference. Um, also, I, uh, I apologize for the previous mistake. So we uh, specifically look at the region of the tumor, muscle, and kidney. Um, sorry about this mistake in the previous slides. Uh, we so we evaluate all the methods under comparison with three RIs, including uh, tumor, muscle, and kidney. As summarized in table here for four times accelerated testing data set, the least square fitting showed the worst performers on three ROIs. Among the deep learning methods on the comparison, uh, attention unit achieved the best performance in correlation coefficient, well, whereas the FBP combo net yield the best performance in uh, SSM, PSNR, and NMSC on all three ROIs. Our proposed uh, DPDC net obtained the overall the best performance on all three ROIs. So the top model demonstrates the different model components tested during ablation. The bottom table summarizes the quantitative performance measures uh, of the deep learning model built by our methods with different component components. Specifically, uh, dense unit and the overall worst performance, uh, dense unit had the overall worst performance, and its performance was worse than the dense UADC, indicating that multi channel input of both the accelerated DWI images and the ADC map provides richer information than the accelerated ADC maps alone for generating the high quality ADC maps. The deep learning model with the same multi-channel input, but built by the proposed method with different loss functions terms, had a different performance. Specifically, uh, dense DWI has the worst performance compared with all the other two models that were trained by optimizing three uh, complementary loss function terms. The dense ADC DWI shared with the ADC net with the same input and same loss function uh, with or without the self-attention block, 
but it performed worse than the DPDC net, indicating that the multi-head self-attention module was uh, useful to improve the ADC generating. So we also evaluated how the DPDC net performance changed with different numbers of filters for each densely connected blocks in all encoders and decoders. As summarized in the top four rows of the table, filter size of 128 yield the best performance for uh, correlation coefficient. Um, filter size of uh, 256 performed the best results for SSIM, and the filter size of 64 was best for PSNR and NMSE. So we adopted a filter size of 64 for our proposed network due to its computational efficiency and the overall competitive uh, performance. The bottom two row uh, of the table summarize the performance of deep ADC net model trained with different numbers of consecutive uh, convolutional layers inside each densely connected block. We evaluate the we evaluate the network backbone with three and five consecutive convolutional layers, and those results indicating that the model with three consecutive um, Convolutional layers yield the best performance for SSM, PSNR, and NMSE. We therefore adopted a convolutional layer size of three for our proposed network. Um, so our results have several limitations. First, our ablation study were carried out based on the four times accelerated data set alone due to a, the high computational cost of deep learning model training. So for the same reason, we are not able to tune the model parameters with a fine grid searching method. Instead, we tune the model parameters by fixing some of them, such as fixing the filter size while testing different numbers of convolutional layers. Therefore, the deep learning, the deep learning model obtained in our study can potentially uh, be improved by fine tuning its parameters. Second, we trained and evaluated our method uh, largely on the simulated data at two different accelerating factors, since it's difficult to collect the both real-world accelerated and fully sampled data simultaneously. We did evaluate our method based on real-world accelerated data and compared with their derived ADC maps with those computed from fully sampled data subsequently. However, um, such pair of the data might capture different diffusion information. Third, the present study only considered identical evenly spaced uh, view angles of DW images at all B values. A more complete analysis would be involved um, with other view ordering schemes, such as golden angle or the one in which different view angles are used to encode for different B values. So here's our uh, conclusion for, for this research. We developed a deep learning model referred as deep ADC net to generate the apparent diffusion coefficient maps from accelerated diffusion weighted MR data, uh, achieving the four to eight fold acceleration of DWI acquisition. So the proposed uh, deep ADC net integrates a densely connected encoder-decoder architecture with a vision transformer. Um, it's shown to perform superior to widely used compressed sensory and several state-of-the-art deep learning model for computing ADC maps. Um, so for this presentation, I didn't put all the details of our, of our research uh, here, but we have more uh, results presented in our archive paper. So if you are interested in this research, you could search for our um, archive paper to get more details of this uh, project. 
So before I uh, wrap up my presentation, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude to many collaborators who have contributed to this work. Um, I could not achieve this work without their support and guidance. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank Steve and Hikon for their invaluable um, contributions to th this project. Their experts and support has being uh, instrumental in our success. Additionally, I would like to thank Miguel for data collecting and pre-processing. Um, this work would not be done uh, with his input. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the grant support provided by Yong and Rong. Um, I would like also thank for all of you in the audience for your attention and interest in this work. And I hope that uh, this presentation has been informative and have sparked some ideas or questions for you. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Oh. Thank you, Yu Ming. Um, I hope, I suspect there's gonna be some questions. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the presentation you gave very clear. Um, and uh, I, one, one of the things I liked was that the slides were all readable. Um, many times, well, many times we get a, a presentation where the slides are so dense that you really can't uh, make out what's on them. So, so thank you very much uh, um, for having making it a very clear presentation. I would invite the audience to um, submit their uh, questions. Um, through the live stream, either through the, uh, the live chat function or through the Q&A function. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, uh, I have a, a couple of very simple questions. Sure. I'm, not involved, I'm not involved in machine learning, so I ask questions from the 10,000 foot view. Um, do I understand correctly that... Um, the ground truth is taken to be the fully sampled, uh, fully sampled case space before um, going to uh, more limited views, and so that the idea would be um, when uh, to take that ground truth data, we'll take the ground truth um, uh, slices or images, and then go to um, fewer views and ask the neural network to reproduce the fully sampled data. Is that how this works? Uh, yes. So in order to generate the ground truth, we will need the fully sampled uh, DWI data. So we first collect the fully sampled DWI data with uh, 403 views. Then to generate the accelerated data, because we um, we cannot collect the fully sampled and the accelerated at the same time, so we generate the accelerated data from the fully sampled images, and the accelerated data are generated by taking out every four or every eight views from the fully sampled data. So we have two um, data for testing. One is four times. Uh, accelerated data, and the other is eight times accelerated data. So both data uh, are used to reconstruct, uh, to generate the fully sampled images um, as the ultimate results. And different from the conventional uh, MR reconstruction, our task is focused on the apparent diffusion coefficient maps. So it's a little bit different from just reconstructing the diffusion weighted image alone because we are uh, estimating the it's a coefficient map. So uh, in our network, we not only uh, generate the reconstruct the fully sampled DW images. We also reconstruct the, the fully sampled ADC maps. And uh, because, it, because it's hard to obtain the both fully sampled and the 
uh, accelerated data at the same time. So we we used the simulated data for this study. That's one of the limitations of this work uh, because we ultimately want to apply the model to the real data. And if we want to uh, adopt this study to the real data, we will also need to collect the real world under, uh, accelerated data to train and test the network. But first we want to apply this to the simulated data to see if this strategy works. And based on the uh, results, we can see the neural network indeed improved the uh, estimating and the reconstru uh, reconstruction performance. Understood. Thank you. Very clear explanation. We've got a couple questions that come in. Sure. Um, one says, uh, great presentation, Yuming. Have you also tried spiral sampled DWI? Also, what was the spatial frequency for undersampled radial DWI for 4X and 8X? Um, so my work is uh, mostly on the machine learning part and we obtained our data from uh, Dr. Rongjo. So for this research, um, we only focused on this specific data set, uh, but for future research, we could also uh, explore our work on other um, uh, sequenced data. And um, so the, the most of the data acquisition details in, is in our present paper. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't really recall like any data acquisition details because most of my work is focusing on the algorithms. So if you are interested, you can check our paper to see more details. Understood. Yes. Um, she, and why don't you put up that uh, citation again um, oh, yeah, so sure. that people can go check it. Um, there's another uh, question. Um, are Cartesian-based undersampled diffusion weighted data sets also applicable to this method. So this is specifically moving away from radial sampling and asking about Cartesian based undersampled data sets. Would it be can you apply your method to them? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, in our so this is the first version of our work posted on archive. Uh, we have a revised version of work we just uh, submitted to the Journal of Magnetic uh, Image References. Um, so we also discussed about the generalizability of of our network to other uh, image acquisition method. And this network structure can be applied to all different sorts of uh, image acquisition data. So it's not only limited to radio sample data, but for this work, because our data are acquired using the radio sampling. So most of the research are done based on the radio sample data. But if you have other um, image acquisition uh, method, to uh, acquire the data, the model can also be applied to those methods. As long as you acquire the fully sampled data as ground truth and you generate the simulated accelerated data from the ground truth, you could uh, um, input those uh, data into the network to generate the final outputs. Do I remember from your talk that you, ha you uh, had to regrid the uh, radial um, a sampling uh, to bring it into Cartesian space, or am I misremembering? Uh, so for data acquisition, we we use the regrading um, uh, algorithm, um, but <laughs> sorry, I don't uh, really recall those kind of um, like the details. So for our data, we we did uh, process the regrading. You so you, you you it was regridded first, and then you worked on the resultant Cartesian images. Yeah, right. Yeah, our our data down in the Cartesian space. Right. So if somebody collected Cartesian based um, K space images, it would work just fine because yeah, right, 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 right. right. So um, I know a little bit about diffusion MR. Um, and I noticed that you had B values uh, that went up to uh, just over uh, 2,000 um, seconds per millimeter squared. Um, 
Did you look uh, on the ground truth data where you have the most signal noise, et cetera? Um, were you, uh, in, in, in B value space, were you getting any uh, curvature in, in the log space? That is to say, um, is your model was that there's a mono exponential dependence on the B value. Right. And as you as you know, I'm sure as you go to high B values, um, this mon you you move away, it becomes non mono exponential. So if you're if you're in um, log space, it would uh, normally be a straight a straight decay, a linear decay, but you start to get curvature in log space because it's no longer mono exponential. Did you see any uh, of that in your data? Uh, yeah, there indeed some outlier points from our data because it's a uh, real world acquired data. So we expect the, the noise and artifacts in the data acquisition um, uh, process. So during the model fitting, we uh, uh, especially uh, exclude those outliers. So if the, the value doesn't fit into the model exponential model, we will remove those uh, results from our data. So the, the final uh, data will be like all will be all the data points within the fitting the model exponential model. Understood. Understood. Um, you know, something to think about in the future. I, I like that you collected a lot of B values. Um, the initial the initial decay um, is very much mono exponential. The that is at the right. low B values. Right. Yeah. The problem with that is there's not much dynamic range. Um, but some of the more advanced models, um, such as mono exponential plus a constant, just for example, or including kurtosis, which is the B squared dependence. Um, will let you in essence extrap use all the data to extrapolate back and get that initial slope and that it, that initial slope again is is purely mono exponential um and that might might allow you to um avoid the outlier problem just 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 a thought um maybe a last question uh from me at any rate I'm unfamiliar with the term ablation studies. Oh. What, what does that mean to me? Again, I don't understand. Uh, I'm not in the uh, machine learning community. What? What? Explain ablation studies to me uh, in simple language. Huh? So I, I'm sorry. I, I should put a more like detailed explanation for that term. So that means during the machine learning, when you uh, test the model, you have different parts, like, like different uh, modules in the model, such as like different network inputs. So for our model, we have the multi-channel inputs. So our inputs include the DWI scans and their uh, ADC corresponding ADC maps from the accelerated data. So for ablations, that would means, so we have a baseline model and we have the model with different modules. So for this ablation, the baseline model would be only the accelerated ADC uh, images as input and the ablation study is to study the different inputs. So one model, we have the ADC inputs. The other model, we have the multi-channel inputs, including the DWS scans and ADC maps. So ablation is to measure the difference between those two models. And uh, usually for machine learning, we need to do a lot of ablation studies to study like, which part of the network actually works, uh, leading to the improved performance. So in our study, we had uh, different ablation studies for the different network inputs and also loss functions, because for uh, deep learning um, training, we will need to have different loss functions to improve the network learning. And so we did ablations on the uh, different uh, training loss. And we also did ablation on the network structures by changing the different parameters of the networks, such as the um, filter size and the, the block size. So ablation just means you have a model and you have a model with additional module. So you want to check the difference um, with, for the, the by adding this module, so you will run the ablation to study the performance difference. 
So this is the method to validate and prove that our model works better than the baseline model. Got it, got it. We got another question that came in. What is the role of self-attention mechanism in this model? The role of, I'm, I guess, the uh, role of the, th the self-attention mechanism in this model. What's the role? So the self-attention is used in the bottleneck uh, of the network. Um, this was adopted from the uh, natural uh, natural uh, image task, and the self-attention module is help the network to learn the image filter better uh, than just having a convolution alone. And based on our ablation studies, the show it showed that with the self-attention module, our network achieved a better uh, metrics compared to the model without it. So it helps the model to extract a feature and learn the global independency between those features to capture more details of the input images. Thank you, thank you. Well, I guess uh, I'm gonna ask one more question. I'm gonna sure. take notes. Um, <laughs> you mentioned you used simulated data for training and evaluation at one point. Right. Um, what did you mean by simulated data? Oh, um, so the, the real world data are collected in real world for the fully sampled uh, acquisition. So the simulated data means because we cannot acquire the accelerated and fully sampled data at the same time. So we will need to generate the accelerated data ourselves. So for simulated, that means we generate the simulated accelerated data from the fully sample data. Ah, ah, I got it. I got it. I got yeah, it. because it's 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 hard to acquire the both uh, sampling rate at the same time. Yeah. Well, in fact, um, it would seem that um, if you've got this, if you've got fully sample data as ground truth, um, and then you downsample that. Um, the object would be to get back to ground truth. So there's, you know, what, uh, what, uh, I mean, that, I would think that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, okay, it's simulated, but um, it's real data and you know exactly where you're trying to get back to. Uh, right, and we also know the ground truth uh, from the fully sample data to evaluate the network performance. Yeah, 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 uh, very interesting. Um, have you test? Do you do any testing on phantoms? I would have thought that would be a, a place that you would start, um, because you can get much. You know, there's no motion problems, susceptibility. You can shim. Uh, you've got uh, depending what phantom you use, you've got it is truly mono exponential um, diffusion decay of the diffusion signal. Do you use phantoms as a first step before you get going with, with real real data, real animals? So when we uh, acquire the data from the from the data I, I got uh, from Dr. Rongzhou, uh, we indeed have the water phantom uh, taking with the, the mice. So the water phantom also appeared in the image. So we did the computation for both the water phantom and the mice as the whole image. Uh, but for the specific organ of interest, we, we just uh, look at the tumor, kidney, and uh, muscle from the image. We also have the, the manual labels for water from them. Um, but for this study, we didn't specifically look at that value because we're interested in more of the sp specific organ of interest. But yeah, uh, we do have those data and uh, we can look at the performance on the phantom to see how the model performs. Yeah, that's really nice because the, the the phantom along the same field of view as the animal gives you, uh, if you will, uh, a true ground truth because right. you know the answer should be assuming you know the temperature, and so it, it's it's a terrific check on uh, uh, on how close, how accurate, <laughs> how actually accurate you're getting with the ADC. That that that's a, that's a, that's a that's nice. It's very nice. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, well, I don't see that there are any more. Let me just see here. I'm checking any more questions. If there are any more questions from the audience, please get them in. Otherwise, I think we are about done. Um, I remind uh, the audience that the abstracts uh, are open now for the upcoming WMIC. Um, it's going to be in Prague. And again, it is simply a gorgeous city. Um, so get those abstracts in and uh, please check the website for the upcoming webinars um, that I that, that I mentioned. Um, I think I think we're there. Uh, Yuming, thank you very much for a very stimulating uh, presentation. Again, congratulations on the slides. I could read them all. <laughs> I could digest them. No, this is yeah for the audience out there, please, you know, when you give a presentation, Less is less is more. A slide is not uh, the equivalent of a manuscript. Please, you guys are killing me when I listen to these things. Um, this was great, Yuming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, hosting this, and thank you for inviting me to this webinar to show my work and uh, giving me a lot of constructive suggestions for how to improve our work. And thank you very much. So uh, my my background is pure machine learning. I don't have much uh, background of the like web app experience. So for this PowerPoint, I know most of the audience maybe they are not. Uh, machine learning experts. So for this presentation, I put uh, I try to put uh, as less information, uh, more like complex details in the PowerPoint instead of I just present the general ideas of the machine learning and the motivation purpose of our research. So uh, I'm really glad this uh, presentation is clear and I hope everybody could enjoy my presentation. And thank you again for hosting this. Yeah, one, one, maybe here's a question. So when are you thinking of graduating? Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully I can graduate in like one year because uh, we have this manuscript submitted to the journal and I'm working on another uh, image segmentation task for uh, urinary tract segmentation. Uh, currently we are writing the manuscript for that work as well. So I hope uh, after I publish those two papers, I'm considering graduating. And then are you thinking about doing a postdoc? Uh, probably. <laughs> okay, so for the audience, um, if, if you've got postdoctoral positions coming up, uh, in image analysis, uh, I'm going to say write to Yu Ming <laughs> and see if she'd be interested in joining your lab in about a year. All right? <laughs> thank okay. you, thank you. You've got it. <laughs>